Welcome to the first of many fireside chats here at Luminar CES 2024. I'm Howard Nook. I'm the VP of Design at Luminar. My mission is to drive industrial design of our LiDAR sensors and also work with our partners and their design teams to integrate our LiDAR in as beautifully and seamlessly as possible into their rolling works of art. It is my honor today to be in conversation with one of my idols. Uh, he is truly one of the most important and influential people in electrified vehicles. He was the chief design officer at Volvo and is also, for the last six and a half years, the CEO of Polestar, Mr. Thomas Ingenlath. Hey. Hey, Art. Hey, hey. All right. Thank you for joining me today. Very, very exciting Thank time. Thank you for having me here it's having that great chat with you. Oh, amazing. Um, today we're going to talk about a topic that's actually near and dear to our hearts, um, both as designers, but also in this industry of safety and the future of, a, of automobile technology. Um, before we jump into all of the details around safety and design, I actually want to ask you about your company mission. Um, I watched Polestar Day, and it was an incredible event. And the way you described uh, how Polestar focuses on the future is you are an exclusive design-focused brand with design as advanced as its technology. Please tell me a little bit about that in your point of view. You're right. The um, mission of Polestar is, of course, from a very big picture to transform and make that movement to sustainable mobility a desirable one, to you know, not preach to people that they should, uh, you know, buy the next uh, good thing for the environment, but actually to tempt them into this new technology with beautiful design, great um, looks of the car, great experience driving these cars. So that's the whole idea of, of Polestar. I love that. So rather than bullet points of technology trying to push people to buy it, you're using design to pull people in, in a beautiful way, almost naturally. No, exactly. I mean, you, you mentioned I've been working as a designer for a long time in my life. And the idea was always to communicate, to make technology um, function something that adds to the, the, the central experience of the people. and. Um, in a way, we made that the principle of the company. This mission, um, the idea of electromobility being something that really the whole society has to um, get to, to make that a desirable, enjoyable journey. I love it. That's, um, I very much align with that. Um, it's really form follows function and form follows meaning kind of put into one. Um, let's talk a little bit about the details of the car. Uh, you know, I'm personally very inspired by the way that you've applied a lot of these interesting graphics and really highlight a lot of the technology in your car rather than hide it. Um, and these areas you call sensor zones. And we can see, every, everyone can see here, the beautiful Polestar 3 behind you. Um, you kind of have this uh, ultimate sensor zone in the roofline of the car with this iconic crown with the LiDAR inside. Talk to me a little bit about how you got there and, and some of your thinking and behind how we design, designed that. Yeah, the idea is that really some of this new functionality that we have, the new technology, we use to um, create interest, not decorating the car with superficial details, but actually picking interesting technology moments and celebrating them, making them um, the, the, the cherry on the cake of it. So one big story was, for example, the transition from a combustion engine car to an electric car makes a big big reflection on the face of how how you see the face of the car normal cars have eyes these are the, the, the lights you have a mouth and the mouse always was the air intake air intake clearly to cool down the combustion engine car that need is gone should be artificially create a, a, a grill a, 
air intake that doesn't have that function anymore. Um, we discovered that with ADA Sensoric that we have with a radar in front cameras, we could actually create that new tech zone, which we call uh, the smart zone, and create that face, make the car, give the car a character um, by defining the smart zone. So that was one of the new ways of taking modern sensoric and create a character for the car out of it. I love that. Um, it's almost as though now with this new EV future, that when you see a grill on a car, it almost looks antiquated. It almost looks old. And that's because it's an old technology. But now with EVs, you don't need the grill anymore. And so not only the face of the car is changing, as you say, but the silhouette is changing because we have new technology like LiDAR, the eyes of the car that are actually on top of the vehicle that helps you see. So that changes the silhouette. Talk to me a little bit about um, the changing silhouette of the vehicle and how and what that communicates to your customers. Yeah, obviously, um, the LiDAR technology becoming a very important element of communicating, hey, this is the most advanced safety system, it's the most advanced sensor set that we have, needs some physical representation. Yeah. And it's one thing to read about it, and one thing to, to kind of know about it, but it's a complete different story of making it a uh, experience in the visual uh, shape of the car. Now, sometimes you have technology which is so small that you actually have to artificially enhance it. <laughs> yeah. Now with the LiDAR, obviously, especially now in the first generation, we have a quite obvious physical presence of it. Yeah, and we don't try to disguise it. We actually make that uh, a quite obvious feature. And yeah, the silhouette, it clearly gets that little kink in there, which reminds you that of the greatness of the tech that you have in your car. And it's, it's an almost deliberate disturbance of what you would expect as the natural flow of the car. It clearly is you know, like making an exclamation mark and shaking things up. Oh, I, I love that. Um, especially as new technology needs education. Uh, not everyone understands what LiDAR is or even what proactive safety is, nor potentially the benefits of it saving millions, hundreds of millions of lives. So almost this design exclamation mark, as you call it, um, helps educate your customers as to what the benefit is and also helps them kind of see the future of, of what, uh, you know, proactive safety and safety driven by design can really be. I actually, uh, in, in some ways, you know, my background, as you know, is mobile design for many years. And the mobile industry has miniaturized and miniaturized and made more efficient. So as we start with Iris and move to Iris Plus and then into the future. This exclamation part mark will start to get a little smaller. What kind of ideas do you have around kind of the integration and the evolution of this exclamation mark? I mean, now you're touching upon kind of our very first meeting when, you know, me having been talking to Austin um, a lot about that to make his technologies something kind of beautiful integrated in a car. He actually should invest into the design of um, the, the technology and on top of having many, many great engineers have as well a designer on board who helps him and the engineers to not just design a beautiful product, but actually to animate the engineers to strive for that next step and make make that, that take direction of the technology, not just having better spec, but as well making it more integrated, a, a better engineering in a way. And that's exactly the talk that we had when you came then on board at Lumina. Mm -hmm. And we actually had spun a bit of the idea how that vision of how, where the technology would go. And of course, miniaturization is one thing, making it much more from the very first moment, moment of designing a car, a part of what you incorporate into it, not as much more as an afterthought, but something that is immediately there and you work together as a team. Very much like we do, of course, with 
a lot of other pieces where yeah almost for decades we are in dialogue with the engineers how to how to strive for better engineering that makes that product um, a very smooth and uh, harm harmonic product mm -hmm. so that's how we started the discussion and that is yeah. now months ago and of course i'm very excited to see how things are shaping up for the future oh, and maybe you can talk a little bit about as am what, I. what are you what you have been achieving <laughs> we, we continue to strive and achieve and advance um and uh and i think you know some of the things that you talk about during uh during that response is really about collaboration how do we have design and your, the technology teams kind of collaborate um, you know, I've had the benefit of visiting you in Gothenburg, um, seeing in the Bat Cave, as it were, which doesn't really look like a Bat Cave. Of course, it's all white. Looks more like Lucius Fox's, you know, R&D center. Um, you know, I think the collaboration between design and technology is so important. Can you think back on your relationship with Luminar in these number of years so far, of any certain notable moments that really kind of pushed forth design and design for? Uh, safety. I love visiting the um, the research center of Lumina and really seeing all the details of of the check inside there. And for me, it's I mean, I'm, I immediately said, "Wow, I would love to expose that check much more raw as it is and not hide it as much as we have to do it." So, our idea, of course, our common idea is to make that really beautiful, great technology much more visible, much more. An experience for the customer. I mean, all the money you spend on it should not only be um, enhancing your safety; it should as well give you a reward uh, for the product. And I think that technology that you are now packaging is beautiful. It's it's really an awesome piece of beautiful um, engineering and innovation. So that's really the journey I had to make this in the product. Uh, a quite shiny star of of the tech that you buy there. I've, I've seen that uh, even before I joined Luminar, when you launched the Precept. And uh, when I saw your presentation of the Precept and I saw how you integrated uh, the LiDAR into the, the roof line, you really celebrated the technology. You didn't try to hide it. And in fact, uh, you even applied uh, really technological terms to say, oh, this is what this is. This is the benefit. Um, and I, th I really think you, you do an excellent job of that. Um, you know, moving forward, as uh, you know, that develops into the future, um, I believe there's so much that we can do in that roof line to really create this silhouette that is incredible. Um, you know, in the uh, Polestar 3, 4, and 5, you know, that, those are really going to be your volume drivers. So can you talk a little bit about um, what your thoughts are there on the aesthetics, but also on kind of maybe the customer experience side of that. What do, you, um, what do your customers kind of, uh, what can they look forward to with these, this new mobilized chauffeur technology and the design integration of Luminar LiDAR into the, into the five? Posta is a brand that obviously promotes a lot, um, a driver's car. I mean, our cars are very much set up and tuned for people to enjoy drive themselves driving. And very often I have that um, question about how, why, why at all do we bother integrating autonomous drive technology and features into our cars? Um, and I'm very convinced that even the most ambitious uh, driver will and does experience very, very annoying unpleasant traffic situations when um, you go into a mode where hey I'm happy the car taking over and guiding me through that traffic while I enjoy complete different things so it's a luxury premium feature to actually go onto that journey and if use that technology which of course helps to save lives but use the great check that you have with that in your car to actually take over as well certain uh, stretches of your journey. It's not that A to B journey we're talking about. It's really about you going uh, from from one town to the other and there's this really quite boring, annoying, um, dense traffic. 
where you just simply take your phone and uh, answer an SMS and whatever legally and letting the car drive uh, that stretch. Very different to that short trip that you do to enjoy a mountain road or whatever. I mean, they are, they, life is just not always the same. So we very much believe that it's um, a big part of an exclusive premium car to offer this next step of ADAS functionality. And of course, we want to do that in the best and safest way. And we made that very clear dedication to say, you need the LiDAR quality of, of, of information in order to make that step. We don't want to do it without it. Yes, that's right. I, I love the way you describe that. Every, every journey, every drive in the car has a different expression or emotion. Uh, a, a, a drive up the mountain on the weekend is very different than commuting. And uh, I think you can find safety attributes in any of those two when you're commuting to the office and you're checking your SMS and you have hands off, eyes off, um, but at the same time you know the car has your safety in mind. Also versus driving up the mountain and there happens to be a bicyclist or something that comes out of nowhere, your car has your safety in mind. And you should as well a bit more be critical about actually your state of mind. Sometimes you're just simply yourself not paying that much attention as you should. So I think it's well about that responsibility. Am I really at the moment the better driver? Yeah, I agree. I think we're more and more distracted every day. Um, I'm half to blame working on all that mobile technology yeah. all those years. So um, I think the future is bright. Um, what you've created on Polestar 3, what you've done in the precept, and I know for the future as we collaborate, is going to be beautiful. I can't wait to see more of you in Gothenburg. Um, before we leave, are there any other final comments you'd like to make? Or <laughs> I well, I, I, I would love to make one comment, and that is um, the privilege that I had to see a little bit about the work that you're doing here and where we are going with this. <clears throat> I'm really excited about it, and I think uh, that in building these cars with the new tech that you have been as prototypes here already, it will be um, something really fascinating and beautiful to, to, to work as, as us as car designers with that tech. So I'm, I'm really happy how that um, has evolved and is what direction it's moving. And to, you know, the, the, the precept was once a, a dream. We, we said, okay, this is how we would love the future to be. But it was a little bit not, not having the real background um, to, to work with. It was a bit of a fantasy and to see now that the future will go into a, a direction which is not just a fantasy but a real beautiful uh, technology putting into our cars. I'm, I'm really convinced that it will be even better than that uh, show car. So reality will really um, overtake that um, and, and become an even better product than we could imagine it some years ago true science fiction becoming science fact and it's even better yeah. than what we can imagine. Thank you very much for joining me today. This has been an absolute pleasure. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Thomas Ingenlath. Thank you. <laughs> and Howard from Lumina.